Hey, welcome to Algebra 2, Lesson 1-3, Piecewise Defined Functions. Um, we have started Model and Discuss. Today we'll look at the example 1. So the essential question for this lesson was how do you model a situation which a function behaves differently over different parts of its domain? So in example 1, we'll model with a piecewise defined function. For example, Elani has a summer job as a lifeguard. She makes $8 per hour for up to 40 hours each week. If she works more than 40 hours, she makes 1.5 times per hourly pay, or $12 per hour. For each hour over 40 hours, um, that is. So how could you make a graph and write a function that shows Elani's weekly earnings based on the number of hours she worked? So step one, let's make a table of values and a graph so for 20 hours worked, should be paid $160 um, because she makes $8 per hour until, until 40 hours, right? So $20 times 8, 160. 25 times 8, 30 times 8, 35 times 8, okay? And then up until 40, she... Uh, she will have the same pay, $8 per hour. But then, if she works more than 40 hours, she makes 1.5 times per hourly pay. So it's when x is greater than 40, right? Um, so at exactly 40 hours, it's still going to be 320 times 8. And then after that, 41 hour, 45 hours, right? Um, it's going to be... 1.5 times per hourly pay or $12 per hour. So now here, you can multiply $12 per 45, right? And then you get 380, 50 times 12, 440, 55 times 12, 500. And so if you look at the graph, it's going to be the slope of eight until it hits 40 and it becomes 1.5 times, which is 12 hours. So the slope gets a little bit steeper here. So then you have two different, two different um, slopes, right? That means you have two different equations. Th these two equations are two different linear equations. So notice the plot contains two linear segments with a slope that changes slightly at 40. A function that has different rows for different parts of its domain is called a piecewise defined function. We're still describing one kind of situation, right? One context. In one context, you may have um, different parts and different slopes. Then that, that means you have a piecewise defined function. So step three, you can write an equation for each piece using the intervals. So from zero, when x is from zero to 40, your graph is going to be 8x. And when x is bigger than 40, your graph is a different graph, um, 12x. But it's not just 12x, because if it's 12x, your graph is going to be different like this, right? So it's not going to be continuing here. So you need to figure out the y-intercept where your slope is, um, 12x, that passes through this point. 40 comma 320, right? So using your slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, you're going to figure out um, you're going to figure out the y-intercept by plugging in this point. Uh, when x is equal to 40, your y has to be 320, right? So there needs to be an equation that makes this true. Your slope is 12. Uh, where your x is 40, your y is equal to 320. So we're finding the y-intercept of this graph, this graph where slope is 12, where it passes through your point 40, 320. So then you solve, solve, your b should equal to negative 160. So then you can write your equation as 12x minus 160, and that's your second equation. But that equation is only true when x is greater than 40. Okay, so you can write the entire function 
into two different parts like that by using this bracket and writing your function, comma, then your domain, your range, your, your range of values, right? So it's your domain interval, interval of your values. So make sure you write the function. This is how you write it. Function of x, and then you write brackets. It doesn't have to be just two, two parts. You can have multiple parts, but this is a function. So it's a rule or it's an expression. And then you have to write the interval, okay? So this is the form of how you write the piecewise defined function. So let's look at the next page and see if you can try number 1, A, and B. How much will Eleni earn if she works 37 hours or 43 hours? Looking at your graph, can you figure it out by yourself? Pause the video and come back when you're ready for answers. Okay, are you ready? So 37 hours. Look at your graph. 37 is somewhere here. It's less than 40. So you multiply by 8 because your slope is 8. So if it's less than uh, 40, it's you use the first equation. So 8x is your function. 8 times 37 is 296. So she will earn $296. Okay, what about 43 hours? Look at your graph. If it's greater than 40, you use 12x minus 160. Or this graph is going to extend, right? So use this equation, 12x minus 160. 12 times 43 minus 160 will be 356. So she will earn $356 when she works 43 hours. Did you get everything right? If so, good job. We'll continue with the next example in the next video.